I'm the president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Upsilon Epsilon Omega Chapter in Baltimore County. Uh, we are celebrating the International Day of the Girl Child, um, and we are so excited um, to have a conversation today with one of my sorority sisters, Keenan Austin Reed. Um, she is simply marvelous. She is one of the co-founders of the Black Women's Congressional Alliance on Capitol Hill, where I was a former chief of staff, and she's also the current chief of staff for Congressman Donald McEachin of Virginia. Hello, Keenan. Hi, Kendra. It's so good to see you before. <laughs> hey, it's good to see you too. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to speak with, with us. And as we honor the International Day of the Girl Child, can you just share um, what led you and a few of my friends uh, to co-found the Black Women's Congressional Alliance? Yes, absolutely. So in 2018, not too long after the president was um, elected, I think we, you know, were all feeling heavy. We were feeling frustrated. And at the same time, um, there was a lack of diversity on Capitol Hill. That's been consistent. But one thing that um, was a rallying cry for BWCA was at that time, no Black woman had ever been chief of staff to a Democratic United States Senator. Right. And as uh, diverse of a uh, ideology that Democrats claim to be, we couldn't believe in all of us are gems, even, even though BWCA ended up being and is currently bipartisan. Um, we just found that to be astonishing. And there were other key places that would lead someone to be a chief of staff in the Senate or to lead them to be like we are, or you were a chief yeah. of staff in the House that if you don't get in on the ground floor, if you don't have certain opportunities or mm -hmm. experiences, um, you're blocked from this. So we wanted to uh, take the reins and found an organization to give women the tools that they needed and more so the intel that they needed. You can't apply for a job that you never hear about. And so That's many right. of the jobs, you don't, no one uh, will post about them. You got to be on, you got to uh, have some scoop. So we wanted to develop our new girls network and, and found the Black Women's Congressional Alliance. Wonderful, wonderful. And what are some of the programmatic areas that BWCA focuses on? I know that there's a wonderful um, book club. I know that there are professional development opportunities. Sure. So if, yeah, if you could share. We try to stay uh, responsive to the market. So um, as you know, chiefs of staff, they want you to know Capitol Hill through and through. They want you to know the legislative process, but they also want you to have campaign experience. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot and to expose our women to the political side, because it, until you become a chief frequently, you're not exposed to the fundraising aspects or the campaign management aspects of uh, the campaign. Right. We teach women how to, to write, how to present themselves, how to do, um, how to promote yourself through your own personal brand, uh, whether that's on your LinkedIn or Facebook or that 30 seconds that you get with someone in an elevator. And then we also, I mean, the, the real core strength of um, BWCA, Kendra, is that we've got people like you um, and other high achieving black women who are so selfless with their time who give come back and give to the programming um and that is that's our secret sauce awesome awesome thank you keenan um so what do you tell young people today uh, specifically young women um, about how they are to value themselves and how they are strong realizing their inner strength um, what do you tell them yeah i um let every woman I meet with know that if you're in the room, you're at the table, you absolutely deserve to be there. Do not wait until you feel like you're ready for the job to apply for it. Um, there, there are studies that show that you've got to ask a woman many times to run for office that a woman will look at a job description and she will wait till she's 80% qualified. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, her male counterpart looked at it and had 40% of the job qualifications in his own mind. He, he decided he could do it in right. their, their hand first. And um, so I tell them, do it before you're ready. You're more than capable. Um, and, and that, and I also let them know, like, you know, as a manager, I deal with all sorts of folks and I, these, your white male counterparts are raising their hand. Um, they are doing it. And so 
it's, it's affirming in them that they're leaders um, and it's affirming in them for them um, that they are capable, that they are strong, that they are smart and talented. Mm -hmm. I tell people who are not black women who work with us to change how they talk about black women. Yes. Don't say she's nice. Don't say she's kind. Say she's smart. Yes. She's strategic. She's thoughtful. Um, she's a leader because right. so much of uh, your brand is when you're not in the room and you're not around and you need someone. Um, it's whatever people are saying about you. And so let's, let's change how we talk about black women. Absolutely. I completely agree. And thank you for those words of wisdom. Um, what can we do to really empower our young people and our young women? How, how can we help to really be a catalyst uh, for, for them? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that um, it takes all of us and wherever you are, hold the door open for women to come behind you. Yeah. And um, I always assure people because you know, I've gotten lots of women jobs and through the BWCA, we've gotten to be able to place people around town and mm -hmm. women always come back and they say, Keenan, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to, I'm going to do something for you. And I, and my, I assure them that I don't want anything back other than for you to help another black woman. Right. So when you get those job openings, please take the extra five minutes to forward them to the Black women in the network. And don't just forward them, because remember we talked about earlier, yeah. you've got to encourage them. You've got to tell them, you right. can do this. And I see you in this role. Take that extra step. Yes. Uh, because they, your validation will in turn validate her and encourage her um, to, to uh, achieve and, and, and move forward. So. Um, I know the wonderful women, my sorors of Alpha Kappa Alpha are always leading, um, but that's one way that, that's one more way we can lead and, and pull our sisters up. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that, you know, my final question hinges upon something that you just said about being seen. How can we ensure that we are letting our young Black girls know that they are seen in this very difficult time um, right now, where there are um, disparities um, in the digital divide, when they're in school, they are disproportionately impacted um, uh, with, uh, you know, some of the disciplinary measures. Um, and so how do we ensure that they know that they are seen, that we hear them, and that we value them? Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, you hit right on it when you said we hear them, because I think that young women, um, sometimes children are dismissed mm -hmm. um, as not having their own values, as their own personalities, as their whole selves. Mm -hmm. uh, our young women now are engaged. They have thoughts. They've been affected by this incredible pandemic. Yeah. The, the current political climate is not lost on them. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage us to all take the time to listen to them. Yeah. Um, and to 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 really hear what they're saying um, and to pour into that um, yes. they, uh, and and let them know the work that we're doing you know yes. just using the spaces that you you mentioned like the, the digital divide like let's talk mm -hmm. to them about um, what it takes to move the needle in those spaces because they are they can handle that discussion and um, they have the power to advocate and use their voice now and we shouldn't treat them as though they've got to wait to be an adult to, to do it. They, they've got power, they've got platforms. And so we should listen mm -hmm. and we should encourage them and give them tools to, um, to, 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 show, to, to further amplify their own message. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so, so, so much again for taking time to share your words of wisdom um, as a co-founder of BWCA and also as a chief of staff on Capitol Hill. Sincerely appreciate you, love you, and I know that I'll see you soon, even if it's virtually. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Because if we are being honest with ourselves, girls become women and champions for other girls and women because they have woven a new confidence in themselves. It's when we're proud of ourselves because we know we don't have to be somebody else and then we break out of our shelves because if there's something girls and women can be known for, it's breaking down their barriers so that they come back no more. And that same confidence that's opening doors will be the reason that you can become so sure of yourself due to the lesson you learned from those other girls, like the ones who came before us, the ones behind us, and the ones besides us, because the empowered girl works, not only for her, but to ensure that her work will repride us, ignite us, and excite us, and remind us, and inspire us to live, and move, and stretch, and prove our voices as worthy, yes, worthy of the volume anybody else would receive, because as a confident girl, I am powerful. So much so that the power vested in me by the power that be starts to loose and flee so that it does more than just benefit me. You see, I'm not trying to be bleak, but the power that is held by we does not stay inside for eternity. See, it does more than what the eye can see. And presently, I'm studying at the university where I could have a discussion with the professor. And conversely, during this lecture, she explained to me that as a strong woman in this country, it is my duty to keep throwing seeds. And she introduced the idea to me that we are, in a sense, farmers throwing seeds, and that is our identity. And every time I were to speak and use my voice, it elevates you all along with me, although it costs my energy. Her point was, although we only have so many seeds, it's still our responsibility to sow many seeds, even if we are unsure whether we will reap. Because the reality is that you, woman, you, strong woman, you, strong black woman, will never be less than what you believe. And that is to say that if you hold any belief in the seeds that you release, you can consider your work as empowerment achieved in that you did so much as stimulate belief. And that girl you saw in the black TV is positively what you want to be. What I want you all to receive by listening to me is that on the road to equality, you, strong women, powerful girls, use your voice and employ your smarts and follow your hearts and write down every word and raise all your issues because they certainly matter as they empower the next powerful girl who is next to be sowing seeds and reaping from those which you release. Making no mistake that every voice, every step, every barrier, every breath, every depth, every wall, every breakdown, every stall, every hallway, each new pathway has been a step toward our future as we always step that way. Because we are women who are future vice presidents, current vice presidents, future life residents, because we are women who were once empowered by girls, empowered in empowered worlds, who have come this far and will only go further. Because voices were lifted for us to have the power and bring the pressure and use our voices because they certainly matter. As they set out to empower the next powerful girl who is next to be sowing seeds because you always kept throwing seeds and they will indeed reap from those that you release. Thank you. Today, I am Dr. Amy Lasser. I'm a member and co-chair of the Global Impact Initiative of Alpha Kappa Alpha, Upsilon, Epsilon Omega Chapter in Baltimore County. This year, our chapter has joined the United Nations and UNICEF to recognize and celebrate International Day of the Girl 2020. Since 2011, October 11th has been declared the International Day of the Girl Child to recognize girls' rights, and the unique challenges girls face around the world. As highlighted by the United Nations, progress for adolescent girls has not kept pace with the realities they face today, and COVID-19 has reinforced many of these gaps. This year, under the theme, My Voice, Our Equal Future, let's seize the opportunity to be inspired by what adolescent girls see as the change they want, the solutions, big and small, they are leading and demanding across the globe. I have the pleasure to speak to one of these adolescent change makers, Ms. Rain Stewart, author of Perfectly Different. Ms. Stewart is leading efforts towards positive social change that reflect respect of self and respect of our individual and collective differences. Hi, Rain. Hi. So let's why don't you tell us about your book, Perfectly Different? 
Okay. Um, so like you said, my book, the title's name is Perfectly Different. Um, it's about my journey with vitiligo, which is a skin condition or a skin disease that I have. Um, it's on my face and on some parts of my body. In the book, I just touch on my self-esteem and self-confidence problems that came along with having this skin disorder and how I learned to overcome all of my insecurities and learn that being different isn't really a bad thing. Awesome. So you kind of touched on this, but we have these differences and there's lots of um, components of, of your book that you, you, you touch on. What are some of the messages that you hope your readers take away from it? One of the messages that I hope my readers take away from my book is, well, there's a lot of things that I hope they take away. Um, I would say that the main one would be to, um, I like to always say, never look at your differences as a bad thing. Um, look at them as something that makes you unique and something that makes you yourself. Um, lots of times I will say that I don't feel as though I would be rain without having vitiligo. I feel like it's something that makes me me. Um, so just never look at your differences as a bad thing is one of the main messages. So how old were you when you wrote this book? Um, so I started writing when I was 12 years old um, and then we ended up self-publishing when I was 14. So there are many high schoolers that struggle to write papers for their classes, let alone publish a book. So what was that like? Um, I would say that it was pretty tough. Um, I am one of those high schoolers that is like, um, oh, I got to write an essay. Like, that's a piece of cake. Like, I, <laughs> I just enjoy writing. Um, but even for me, it definitely was a challenge. Not so much um, just to write, but the whole process. Um, being unmotivated sometimes, wanting to give up. It's just, it took two years to get an actual copy of the book. So that can be very discouraging a lot, just feeling like you're getting nowhere. Um, so I think that was probably the most difficult part of the whole process of creating the book, but it is something, it's not, it's not very easy. <laughs> So what advice do you have for other aspiring young authors? My advice would be to be patient. I know that's really hard, but you definitely have to have patience when it comes to writing books um, and try to stay as motivated as you can because there are going to be some days where you feel as though you don't know what to write down or you don't know what your next step is, you don't know what to do, but if you continue and you push through it and you put your mind to it, um, the end result will be very rewarding and you won't regret it. So just keep going, don't give up. That is awesome advice, awesome advice. So again, you wrote this book in part to deal with um, having a bit of LIGO. So how has writing the book, I mean, oftentimes authors who write books say it's kind of therapeutic or it helps them to deal with. So how has writing the book, now that you're moving through high school, kind of crept into other areas of your life to kind of give you that confidence and empowerment to do other things? Um, well, I think that as far as the whole vitiligo thing, um, the self-confidence, it happened before writing the book. So um, I guess a way that the book helps me to have confidence, um, I'm very self-conscious of my weight. Sometimes I'm self-conscious of how I look, things like that. Um, but just having the book reminds me um, that I am perfectly different and that 
I'm not going to be the same as everybody else. I'm not going to look the same. I'm not going to have the same shape. Um, it, it just helps me to tap back into my mind or snap back and realize that I am perfect the way that I am. Amazing. So what or who inspired you to become the change maker that you are? So um, I would say that my mother inspired me. Uh, she was the reason that I wrote the book. She came up with the idea. Um, she motivated me to do it. And she really just inspired this whole thing. I've, it wouldn't have happened without her. So she's definitely my biggest inspiration. So when you think about where you want to be, let's say in 10 years, what story do you foresee telling about adult Rain Stewart? In 10 years, I would like to own my own preschool and perhaps teach at it. Um, writing the book has made me realize that I truly love working with little children. Um, they just bring so much joy and it, teachers are very important, especially at a young age. So I want to own and teach at my own preschool. I'm also hoping maybe to have another book. Um, there's a lot of things on my mind as far as the future, maybe some investments, maybe trying to do some real estate. It, it's just all over the place, but hopefully I'll be a very successful businesswoman. <laughs> Amazing. I, I know that you will be just hands down. I already know that you will be. So that is just incredibly amazing. Um, so how can people learn more about your book and learn more about you? Um, the way to learn more about me and my book, there are a couple. Um, of course, there's social media um, where my handles. Do you want me to say them right now or just? Sure. Okay, um, for Instagram, it is the title of the book, which is Perfectly Different um, 2018. And it'll come up as soon as you look up um, the book on Instagram. So it's perfectly underscore different 2018. Um, on Facebook, you can also find me under my name, which is Rain Stewart, R A Y N E S T E W A R T, Rain Stewart. Um, the next way to find me would be to go to my website, which is www.perfectlydifferent.net. Um, it's kind of easy to remember just because of the title of the book. So um, perfectlydifferent.net. Those are the three places to find me and learn more about my story and my book. Awesome. Well, Rain, I want to say thank you for sharing your story, which is so inspirational. And on behalf of Alpha Kappa Alpha, Uslan Epsilon Omega Chapter in Baltimore County, and our president, Ms. Kendra Brown, I want to, again, just say thank you for your time. And we are truly looking forward to hearing more from you in the future about your business and just being a leader and, and just giving back, because I know that's what you're going to do um, as you continue your journey to affect change globally. So. Thank you again. Um, to learn more about the community-led programming of Alpha Kappa Alpha Upsilon Epsilon Omega Chapter in Baltimore County, please visit our website at aka Upsilon Epsilon Omega dot org. Thank you.